Hey everyone, and welcome back to another one. Welcome to Program Code 101, the place where we learn the art and skills required to develop code. I'm your instructor, Mr. D Coder. In our previous video, we discussed the concepts of advanced flowchart development, including flowcharting symbols and guidelines used when developing a system flowchart. We also constructed system flowcharts using given system requirements. If you missed the details of that video, please select the link above to review. In today's video, we will look at the concept of modular programming, with emphasis placed on procedures and functions. We will also be exploring examples related to the creation of pseudocode, using procedures and functions based on given scenarios. What is modular programming? Modular programming focuses on the concept of breaking down or separating programs into independent pieces. These pieces then act as building blocks, with each block containing the necessary parts to execute an aspect of overall program functionality. This is equivalent to solving problems by dividing the challenge into smaller sections, then solving these sections individually. The same method is used in businesses, or when at war, with the divide and conquer approach. Advantages of modular programming Ease of use allows programmers or developers to have the ability to debug code based on functionality. This allows code to be accessed and corrected based on the actions of a module rather than focusing on thousands of lines within a program. This saves time and allows deeper focus. Reusability allows the developer to reuse code functionality within different aspects of a program without having to retype specific lines of code. For example, having a menu that repeats at different parts of a program can be easily done by creating a module and having that module called when required. Increased collaboration allows members of a programming team to break down the functionality of a large program into various parts. This allows each member of the team to work on a specified section. This increases collaboration and allows improved productivity and reduces program completion time. Approach to modular programming. There are two approaches that can be used when implementing modular programming. These include top-down or stepwise refinement approach, bottom-up approach. Top-down or stepwise refinement approach uses the idea of breaking down large problems into smaller parts. These smaller sections are then solved and when brought back together will solve the larger problem. This can also be referred to as the decomposition approach. Bottom-up approach. This approach starts with small sections or problems being solved. These are then integrated to find the solution to a bigger problem. This method is said to use the composition approach because small solutions are brought together to solve a larger problem. The detailed concept of top-down and bottom-up approach, as well as examples of both, will be explored in the next video. Implementation methods. Modular programming is implemented through the use of procedures or functions. The use of each method is dependent on the outcomes required. Procedures perform a specific task but does not return a value, while functions manipulate data and returns a value to the main program. To implement a function or procedure, there first needs to be the establishment of its existence within the program. These modules will need to be created, then implemented when necessary. This is done by defining the function or procedure, which specifies the action or actions to be executed by the function or procedure. Calling the function or procedure is the process of launching the module to carry out its specified action or actions. Defining and calling modules. Structure. Defining procedures and functions requires mention being made of the type of module being created. Each module is then given a name, followed by parameters being passed to the module. Functions, unlike procedures, specify the data type of the item being returned. The statements to be executed will then be outlined, followed by the keyword used to indicate the terminating point of the module. The calling of procedures and functions indicates the activation of the module when it is required for use. A parameter is classified as an item being transferred to the module. These items are generally accepted from the main program and then passed to the module through the procedure or function call. Defining and calling procedures. Procedures can be defined with or without parameters being passed to it. The module type is specified, followed by the name given to the procedure. If parameters are used, the name of parameter and its data type are specified. 
If more than one parameter is being passed, each group of parameter name and data type is separated by commas. When procedures are called, the keyword, call, is used followed by the name of the procedure and the parameter being transferred. Please note that the order the parameters are specified in the defining phase needs to be maintained when the procedure is being called. That is, if the procedure has parameter 1 stated before parameter 2 when defined, the calling of the procedures needs to have the parameters arranged in that same order. Procedures. Example 1. The first example requires the creation of a procedure called even numbers that prints all the even numbers within the range 1 to 10. The solution begins with the definition of the procedure. The module header contains the module type, followed by the name of the procedure. No parameter is being passed to this procedure, therefore nothing is placed within the brackets. A variable, called count, is declared as integer and also initialized to zero. This variable is used in the for loop to account for the number of iterations of the loop, this being 1 to 10. An if statement is then used to evaluate whether the value stored in count is an even number. The percentage sign used acts as the modulus operator. The modulus operator has similar characteristics to the division operator. However, instead of providing the result of a division, it provides the remainder. Therefore, if count divided by 2 produces a remainder of 0, then this will indicate an even number. If this expression evaluates to be true, the value stored within count will be displayed. This process will be evaluated for the number of iterations of the loop, with each occurrence of an even number being displayed. The loop terminates after 10 executions. The procedure will then be terminated with the keyword, end procedure. Once the procedure has been defined, it is now time to generate the main program. The main program will now only contain the code required to launch the procedure. Once the procedure is called, the instructions within the definition of the module will be carried out. The pseudocode then ends with the keyword, stop. Procedures. Example 2. The following example indicates the need of a procedure, called even or odd, that accepts a number, then indicates whether the number is an even or odd number. Note that the term, accepts a number, means that this value should be passed to the procedure. Recall the process used in the last example, and then try to identify key actions required for this solution. Pause the video now, and identify the process of defining and calling the required procedure. I will go through the solution in a moment. The solution shows the procedure definition containing the name of the procedure and an item being passed to the procedure. The variable name, as well as its data type, makes up the parameter being transferred. An if statement is then used to evaluate whether the number passed to the procedure is even or odd. This is done by checking if the number mod 2 is equal to 0. If it is, then the number is even is shown, otherwise the number is odd is displayed. The if statement will then terminate, followed by the termination of the module. The main program then shows the declaration of the variable number as integer. Note, items that are passed to the procedure are generally prompted and accepted from the main program. Once this is done, the item can then be transferred to the module through the module call. This is shown in the solution through the prompt and input of a number, which is then passed to the procedure, even or odd. Once called, the procedure will carry out its intended actions. The pseudocode then ends with the keyword, stop. Defining and calling functions, layout. The main difference between defining and calling a procedure, as opposed to a function, includes the change in the specified module type, the keyword, return, followed by the data type of the item being returned, and the identifier or variable used to hold the item or value being returned by the function. It is important to note that the variable being used to hold the returned value in the function call needs to have the same data type as the return data type in the function definition. Functions, example one. The following example indicates the need of a function called ADD that takes two numbers as parameters and returns their sum. The solution shows the function definition which contains the name of the function, the parameters being accepted, and their data types. The data type of the returned value of the function is also stated. The variable sum is then declared and is assigned the integer data type. It is important to note 
that the data type of the variable used to store the result within the function needs to be the same as the return data type. The next step in the solution shows the calculation of the sum of the values passed to the function. Once this is done, the function returns the result of this operation. The end function keyword then shows the termination of the function definition. The main program shows the declaration of the variables, value 1, value 2, and result as integer. A prompt and input statement are then used to request and accept two values from the user. Once this is done, the values are then passed to the function through the function call. Note that the variable, result, is being used to accept the value that will be returned by the function. Once the function is carried out and its intended result is returned, an output statement is used to display the results using a suitable label. The main program then ends with the keyword, stop. Functions, example two. This example requires a function called find max to request a group of values terminated by the number one. It should then determine and return the largest number from the entries made. Pause the video now, review the requirements and try to produce the function. I will go through the solution in a moment. The solution shows the function find max being defined. There are no parameters being passed to the function. However, there is an integer return type. Two variables are declared, these being largest and num as integer. Both variables are then initialized to zero. A prompt is then made for the entry of a value, as well as the process required to terminate input. The input statement then accepts the number entered. Because there was nothing mentioned regarding the total number of values needed for entry, the while loop is used to repeat the process of evaluating each value, as well as accepting new entries. The initial value entered is evaluated to determine whether it's equal to 1. If it's not, an if statement is used to evaluate whether the value entered is greater than the value stored in the variable, largest. This will be true for the first iteration of the loop, because the variable largest was initially assigned the value 0. Largest will then be assigned the value stored in the variable, num. Another prompt and input statement are used to accept a new value. Once accepted, this new value will be re-evaluated to determine whether it is equal to 1. If it's not, the process is repeated, otherwise the loop will terminate using the end while keyword. The last value stored in the variable, largest, is then returned by the function. The main program shows the declaration of the variable, large num, as integer. This variable will act as the variable used to store the results received from the function. The function call is then launched by specifying the function name. Once the function has been executed and its result returned, an output statement is then used to display the largest number using a suitable label. The main program then terminates with the keyword, stop. Yep, good to go. In the next video, we will discuss the concepts of top-down versus bottom-up approach to modular programming. We will also explore examples that look at the utilization of both the top-down and bottom-up approaches to modular programming. Thank you for being a part of another one. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.